What's going on beautiful people? Today we are setting up a predominantly red forest aquarium. And this is the aquarium I'm gonna be using. It is one and a half foot by one foot by one foot. So 45 centimeters, 32 centimeters by 32 centimeters. You know, it's a decent size for what we're gonna be putting in it, which is a better fish. Now this tank actually comes from the super fish range and this light here is the one that comes with it. It's like a kit. And to be honest, it's absolutely brilliant. It's basically up there with the sort of the top end in terms of um, quality. So proper hard, got some good weight to it. I've stuck some electrical tape on the bottom there, you can see just to block some of the light because it is very, very bright, especially for the type of tank we're gonna be doing. Guess what guys, we have got another sponsored video from API and Aquarian. You guys must be loving the products as much as I am because they keep coming back and sponsoring our videos, which is great because it means I can make more tanks and goes to upkeep of the studios. Now throughout the video, I'm gonna be using various products as I always do. Uh, I'm gonna explain them in a bit more detail as I use them, but thank you very much to API and Aquarium for sponsoring another video. Back to the build. And the type of tank that we're gonna do is, you've guessed it, a no filter, dirted aquarium. I've done so many and they're working really, really well. So for instance, this one here is dirted underneath. You see that there? There's a whole layer of dirt on the bottom, then sand capped. Look at the plant growth zero algae anywhere and not a filter in sight. The filter is the plants. And it's just the same with this tank here. This is one of the first ones I did actually, and it went so well that it made me want to do a lot more. Look at these, look. Golden barbs you can see there just coming in. Look at it, it's like a little jungle. So cool, isn't it? And this one here is my most recent setup. I wanted to do a load of reds in there just to see how well it worked with no filter and dirted. And I have to say reds, and dirted substrate, really, really do pop, popping like crazy. There's a slight tinge to the water, which making them look less red and more sort of yellowy. And that's coming from all the wood that I've put in there because this tank doesn't have any water changes. So if I did do a big water change, it would go like proper, like crystal, it is clear, but there's a bit of a tinge to the water, but I quite like it. It just, it's different, it looks different. So when you step back, look, it looks a little bit different to the others. And I like that. And then of course, up here, we have aqua soil, at the bottom here, I doubt I'm gonna pick this up, but aqua soil, yeah I can, and then underneath is the soil. So you can see there how the hair grass is rooting down into it, but look at the tank itself. The uh, Amazon soil in the middle doing really well. And then the ruby tetras as well, really loving this setup. I've added some floating plants and it's just crystal clear, no filter again. It's perfect, I'm just growing them out. I wanna put these in a bigger tank at some point, but they're just too tiddly at the moment, they'll get eaten by anything else. Anyway, we now need to start with our substrate system. The first thing I'm gonna add in, is some topsoil. Now, topsoil I found is to be so much better than compost because it's way less nutrient dense. Compost for me was just really not good. It caused, I don't know why I'm looking into a black hole there. <laughs> compost in first. Here we go, we don't need to be neat, just get it in at this stage. Yeah, I found compost to be way too nutrient dense. It caused all sorts of issues previously. Um, I'm not saying you can't use compost, it's just that for me, I found this way much easier and it all worked a lot better, faster. The tank just settled quickly, yeah. Right, there we go. I think that's enough topsoil to start with. And then on top of that, I'm gonna lay some aquatic soil, which is like aquatic compost. So it's had a load of the organics removed or floated off and what you're left with is this stuff, which doesn't look too dissimilar, to be honest, than the topsoil, but uh, we'll trust that it's a different product and because it's worked so far, it's worked really, really well. And I'm gonna use about the same amount on top. Don't worry about all the stones and everything, that's all good. We're gonna be adding stones to this anyway. Just gonna run my hands through that and break up any clumps of uh, soil there. They're not like really compact, but we don't want them as big, you know, balls of soil like that, just that breaks up nice and easily. So then I'm gonna to add to this a nice big load of gravel and sand, and what that does, it stops it all sort of compacting and sort of trapping air and rotting together, if you like. Now I want high banking on this tank, so that's why I'm adding so much, because I'm gonna bring it up to about this level in a minute. Then we can mix this whole concoction together. Don't worry about making a mess because we'll be rinsing this with water in a minute anyway and it'll clean all the glass off. Try not to scratch the glass like I just did. <laughs> okay, now I can start banking it up more towards the back. I might want a bit more gravel in this. Nah, nah, I think it's all right actually. Once you've got it to the sort of levels you want, 
Spray the whole thing down, including the glass at the sides. It's just really good. It gets everything to sit exactly where it's going to once it's filled up with water as well. Okay, so why have we banked it? Why does it need to be at that angle? Well, there's a couple of things here. One, it creates height at the back, meaning our stem plants will already be right up the tank. And that's what I want it to look like, you know, like a red forest. So I need to see the stem straight away. Also, it adds depth, like the tank looks a lot more like it goes back quite far because of the illusion. If it was completely fat, flat, it would end there. Look, the substrate would end there. Because we've banked it on the back, it's just given an illusion of even more depth. And we want to add more nutrients to this. So every single time I set up any tank that's going to have plants in, I use API root tabs. These are so good. I've been using them for like two and a half years now. And I think the results of my tanks around me speak for themselves. So the tabs actually contain iron and potassium and it just fills in the gaps. It just makes everything like available for the roots of the plant straight away. So the pack has 10 tablets in. For this size tank, I'm gonna use five. Now you can just place them in whole, but I'm gonna crush them up so I can sprinkle the dust everywhere so we're covered. So yeah, for this, I need my pestle and mortar. And I'm just gonna place five of the tabs inside. Two, three, four, five. And then it's just a case of bashing them up. They break up quite easily. Look at that, they break up quite easily. We've got a good amount there to sprinkle over the whole surface. Here we go, look. Spreads nice and easily. Going everywhere. Oh, there's loads still there. I'm gonna have a lot more plants in the back, I think. So we're gonna go thick there. Oh, there's enough to go everywhere. Look at that, I think five was just the right amount. And now we need to lock all of that down with a whole sand capping, otherwise it's gonna leach up into the water column and you will get algae, especially with decent lights. Now, as I say, don't scrimp on the sand capping. You have to make sure it covers the whole lot of the substrate layer. Again, make sure it's at least an inch thick and that's over the whole lot. Don't just pile it in at the back and, you know, a small amount in the front. It needs to be over the whole area. Okay, that is the boring but necessary part done. Next up, the fun can begin. The actual hardscape and making our shape and look to the tank. Now, because I want to go for a forest, I want lots of uprights that like, you know, make it look, make it look a little, make it look a little bit like trees coming up out of the wood. Okay, straight away to start with, I found this massive piece. I'm not sure if it is too big. That, yeah, I think that's, yeah, that looks, that looks, uh, <laughs> yeah, that looks a little bit ridiculous. <laughs> I think I'd need a 60 centimeter tank on this size for that to work. Yeah, I'll save it. It's cool. And it does look cool like that, actually, if you want to do a scape a focused around that but that's not what I'm going for on this one. Right, so I found this one piece here that could work like a tree stump, something like that. I'm gonna have to push it in a little bit, but yeah, I think that's really, really interesting. If I could do another one on this side, just coming out that way, but smaller, it'll give a perspective sense, if you know what I mean. And maybe have some more pieces of wood coming in the foreground at an angle there, if I've got the right pieces. This could possibly work, put it there for a minute. Do you know what I mean? Just because we've got that big one and then it looks like it's much further in a distance. Maybe a bit more angle on it. It won't stay like this. I'll have to glue like a rock to it, otherwise it'll just float up. But yeah, something like that, but maybe a bit chunkier if I can find it. Ah, oh, there we go. I found a second piece. I'm just gonna double it up. Colors are sort of matching, aren't they? Again, this is all be stuck together. I'm just trying to get a shape at the moment. Ah, oh, there we go. I think that works beautifully with those two. I will bring it slightly forward. So there's more room behind the plant, but we've got so much sand and planting areas now. I'm gonna place a couple of rocks in, but nothing too heavy because again, I want the planting room. There's no filter going in this tank, so you need lots and lots of plants. Now when we're placing the rocks, I'm using Sirius stone here. Um, place them right close to the substrate because I'm gonna to wanna to have contact points to glue to, just to make sure the wood doesn't float up when we fill it up with water. None of this wood's been submerged before, I don't think. So yeah, really good idea just to glue it all down. So there's not a huge amount for us to glue here, so I'm gonna use the super glue gel at some key contact points. Okay, so for instance, the wood's touching there, so good dab of it on there. And then also in this section, loads in there. And just anywhere the wood is touching the rock, put a blob of it. And then I've got this reacting fluid. I'll leave a link to it if you guys want. And uh, all you've got to do, spray it on, one squirt, one squirt, and it, and it, and it sets it solid in like seconds, like instantly. It's not harmful to fish or anything. I've used all this stuff loads and loads of times before. And you can kind of see there, the glue blob is going kind of whitey and it's stuck. There we go. So I've gone around and stuck everywhere, 
tap Tesla, tap, 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 not moving. This one's quite delicate, but it's still solid and it won't float, that's the main thing. Eventually it'll be saturated with water and it won't float anyway, uh, but it just means that when you fill up, you know, initially, it doesn't all just come to the surface and end up in disaster. <laughs> I think I'd like a little bit more detail in the foreground here though, so another stone there and also another one out here. That's the best one, yeah, looks best that way. And I just want some more roots or something to come over. Just a bit of interest, you know? Yeah, that looks wicked. See, it just, it brings this out a bit more and it makes it look like it's a bit more intertwined with the whole, I don't know, the whole setup. I'll have some over here as well. <laughs> oh, I just found this great piece to go here, look. And it kind of links the two, links this area together with that one, that cool little arch. And this is where we can have a big focal point of like red plants. That is going to be awesome. Yeah, there we go. Look, look at how it sweeps. I actually need more in the foreground now. I need more details. I just want to keep that wooden sort of twistedness like going, like something that's been there forever. Oh, there we go. I was really trying to get that sort of base of a tree trunk look and the way it all follows round. I think I've achieved that as a hardscape on its own. It looks a little bit weird, but once I start getting the plants in the right area and dividing it up and uh, filling sort of weird gaps like that with mini Anubius or something like that, it should start to come into its own. But before we add in any plants, I just want to add in some detail stones. I've got these, look. See that? A bit wet, but it doesn't matter. Just, just around the edges there. I don't want too much because I'm going to be planting a lot anyway, but just adds a little bit of texture to that otherwise pretty much plain off-white sand. It's actually the next day since I glued this whole thing, so everything is firmly stuck down now, so you can be a little bit uh, rough with it. I know on camera it looks like I did all of this two seconds ago, <laughs> such as the illusion created by editing, but no. Okay, there we go. A little bit of details, a little bit of realism, kind of. Uh, I might actually add even more of that gravel in that back section, section there, just to make sure we've got enough for planting into. Yeah, looking sweet, look. So back there, a big chunk of gravel in the background and there and there. What's also good about that is it means that there's a spot to uh, put the hose into and it means that it won't disturb all the sand. It will just go straight onto that gravel and just disperse. So it makes it so much easier for doing water changes. And I just had a thought, rather than putting a load of like proper green Anubius in, why don't I go for Boost Cadagang? I've got quite a lot of it. Um, it's got more of a sort of reddish, I've got boost red as well, but look, the difference in colour, you can get away with it a little bit more, a little bit less red vibrancy, so I'm going to go with that. Now we've got options with the boost, we can either place it in like this on rocks, you know, and just find the gap, push it in, which I'm not going to do because that's too small, or you can just take it off. So I'll just rip it off the rock. I've got a couple of big bits here, I can snap them in half. I just want to try and find a little nook in there, there we go. I found it, I think. Press it in so you know that it's lodged, and then when you fill it up, it's not going anywhere, and that looks beautiful. And I think there's a little gap in there, isn't there, as well? Yep, just managed to find it. Oh, no, I think I've run out. No, I haven't. Because I have this big rock with loads on. I mean, tell me that doesn't look good. I've just stuck a little green one out here in the foreground just to mix it up a bit. Plus, we're going to have green plants all underneath. I'm going to do like a green floor and then tons of red, all just red, the back and the sides. So what green are we going to go for? You guessed it. No, you didn't guess it because I didn't even know until I just said that. But I'm going to go with Monte Carlo. <laughs> so it's going really well over in this no-filter tank. You can see there, look, it's starting to just, it droops over and then creeps. And as you can see there, it's creeping. And then there's a a root, which means it's growing and doing well. So I'm gonna go for that again. And out here in the plant storage area, you can see here, I've got four pots of it. I don't think I'll need four, but I'll go with whatever we need. Oh, I just forgot, I've got some crypts here as well. This is Crypt Albeda Brown, which has got some nice reds in, in it as well. So I'm gonna add those too. So as always, guys, all my plants are from Tropica. And these ones have been sat in my plant store for about three weeks now and they've been growing, so that's how good it is. If you get a little tank and put a little bit of water in the bottom, stick your uh, plants in, put some plastic film over the top, and they'll just stay and keep growing. That's why I like to get this type, because you, eventually you get more for your money as well. Nice one, Tropica.
whoa, how good are we looking? So that's like the initial small foreground plants. Now I want some Altanamphra rainikiki kiki thingy, pinky one in this section, this section, maybe a little bit poking through the middle as well. I think that looked really good as like a mid ground plant. Yeah, so it's this one here. It's also from Tropica, but I've had it growing in this sort of grow out tank. I have one there. Oh, that's rooted really well. Some good roots growing there. And then this one as well we'll have. Oh, there's two there. Yeah, look at that. Really, really good health on those. Awesome. Okay, so I want sides and middle and the back. The longest piece can go at the back. There it is there. Because then we can see it peaking above everything else. Oh yes, that's gonna look so good. And then one on this side. And then one over here as well. Oh, this is going to look sick, but I just need to spray everything down, keep it moist whilst we're planting. In fact, I don't know why I'm doing that, because now I'm going to fill it up anyway, and then I can plant the stems into it when it's full, which is fine, they sit better. So as this is being filled up, I'm now going to add in the second API product, which is Aqua Essential. This basically just completely purifies your tap water. It removes like chlorine, chloramines and heavy metals. And if you're putting it in at higher levels, you can also get it to uh, detoxify ammonia, nitrite and nitrate. Now there's a new setup, there isn't any of that in there. So we only need a small amount just to get our tap water safe. But if you just follow the instructions, it tells you everything you need to do. It can be a lifesaver in many situations with your fish, if there's like a spike in ammonia or something like that but it's also highly concentrated which means that a bottle like this will last you a long time so it's really good value for money as well yeah this is what i'm talking always shake your bottles by the way but this is what i'm talking about watch how much i need for this size tank hang on trying to be careful that is all i need <laughs> now we can carry on filling it up okay we're full i don't know if you can tell with the tank's a little bit unlevel, but I don't care. <laughs> no, no, it's not gonna crack the glass. Just chill out, everyone. <laughs> Just where this is quite a flexible, cheap thing, and some of it's on that middle, middle bit, and some of it's, yeah, it's absolutely fine. I mean, I've had way heavier stuff on here without a problem. <laughs> okay, now the fun can really start, and we can properly turn it into a red forest. There's the transition. We've gone from bright green to the mid-ground browns to the pinky sort of ready purpley and then at the back it will be pro oh, it'll be properly red <laughs> so the beauty of having heavily planted stem tanks not stem tanks <laughs> stem plants in tanks but mostly stem plants so stem tanks is that there's always a load of plants that you can pinch or <laughs> trim up I mean, this all needs a trim anyway. I've waited till now because I knew I wanted to use them. So I could take trimmings of all the red plants and use them in the background. Now we've got Ludwigia palustris, super red there. We've got, I think that's uh, Ludwigia grandulosa. Down the bottom, we've got Rotala macrandra. That's another Ludwigia palustris super red. And that is actually Rotala hra. It's just quite low down in the tank at the moment. Uh, so it's not receiving enough light to be able to actually sort of go red. So I'm now just gonna take trimmings just where I want it to start regrowing again. What's quite funny is I've got all these tools and aquascaping scissors and I'm using some rubbish old kit scissors from a hairdressing. Do I really need hairdressing scissors? <laughs> <laughs> there we go, so I've made a good dent there and I've laid out my plants to the side. That's the Grandulosa, a little bit of Ludwigia. Then over this side, look, I've got them in different lengths, so the longest, medium, short, another long group at the back. It just means I can layer them a little bit better. Okay, here we go. The whole point of this is that I can plant and still see what I'm doing. Now, for me, I want it to sit up there, which means I need to bring up the gravel in the background a lot more. Um, there's, there's no way near enough there, so I'm gonna use some gravel to do that. Now, obviously, you guys won't need to do this. Um, you can just wait for the plants to grow, but I am making a YouTube video, remember, which is not only sort of educational, kind of. It's uh, entertainment as well, so I want the result to be like finished when I'm done. But ordinarily, yeah, you just wait. You just wait for the plants to grow up taller, and then you just snip them. Okay, sweet, not that it matters because we're not gonna see it, but those stones actually look better <laughs> than the ones I had in before. Just sort of leveling it out a little bit. Right, we'll try again with the planting. Oh, look at that, much better. Sitting right up just where I want it.
Okay, it's now been a few days since I filled the tank up and it's kind of murky. Not too bad, actually. I was expecting it to be a lot worse, but yeah, pretty good. I'm gonna do a quick water change though, just to get rid of some of those tannins, uh, just to freshen things up as well. And then we can put in our better fish, who is actually currently just chilling in this tank. What are you doing there? Might be asleep, actually. He's definitely okay, don't worry about that. The top, no, there we, oh, there we go. He's coming up, he thinks I'm gonna feed him now. But yeah, his colors will look really, really good in that tank. Um, he's getting a little bit of some frayed fins on the side there. And I think it's because there's some proper sharp bits of wood at the back. Um, when I made this tank, I completely forgot about how delicate and silly these little fish can be swimming into tight spaces. So there'll be a lot more room for the new one. And it's more rounded, sort of smooth sticks. I've got some sharp ones in there, but this is a no filter tank as well. And look at how brilliant that's all grown. I mean, it doesn't look too brilliant from the top angle, but um, yeah, it does everywhere else grow beautifully, but I want to change it up. It's a bit too dense now, and I, I want to give him a lot more room, to be honest. One of my favorite better fish I've ever had this one. So pretty, isn't it? Now his, his fins aren't as frayed as they first appear because, uh, let me try and get in there on the zoom. Uh, lots of those sections are actually translucent, but there is some actual fraying as well. So hopefully that will get all sorted in the new in the new tank. It's not gonna be like hurting him or anything, but we can get him looking a bit tidier than that. That's the thing with these Dumbo betters. I mean, big, there you go. You can see how that's translucent there, just on those edge bits. So it, it can look like it's worse than it is, but it's just the edges, it'll get sorted. Whoops, the water flooding back in nearly just exposed all of the soil which wouldn't have been good it wouldn't have been too much of a disaster because this stuff isn't massively organic but yeah now we've got fresh tap water going in there so we need another dose of aqua essential because the fish is going in next such a small amount needed though for this tiny tank now it's important to put any sort of chemicals into a no filter tank uh, when the water's going in like this because the flow of it all moving around will just disperse it better because obviously there's actually no filter blowing it all the water around. Blowing? Is that the right word with water? I don't know. Now currently in the tank there's zero beneficial bacteria. It's a brand new setup so if we're going to put fish in we need to add some to the water. That is where API's quick start comes in. This stuff is insane. I cycle all my tanks with fish in them, which means I put them in straight away, I add a drop of this, uh, just follow the directions on the back, it tells you exactly how much you'll need for your aquarium, and I never get any fish losses. Now granted, I also test the water every single day as well. Hang on. Yeah, for the first week, I test my water with my API test kit. I think it's absolutely essential. Last time I said that, some people were saying, I've never had a test kit, and that's absolutely fine. If you're that perfect that you never get any issues with the water, Maybe you don't need a test kit, but for anyone who's thinking, oh, my fish died or my fish don't look healthy, something's wrong, this is the first port of call. Surely it is. I mean, how else would you know? It's, they live in the water. You need to know what's in it. So yeah, if you haven't got a test kit, I suggest you just get yourself one. Either get this one or you can get the cheaper strips, but something, something to detect what's in the water if you're having problems. So always shake up your beneficial bacteria. And for this size tank, I'm going to need Oh, two capfuls, that should do it. One, two, and why not a little bit extra for luck? I always do that. <laughs> and next we need to add in the leaf zone, very important. This contains iron and potassium, and it's the only fertilizer I use anywhere in all of my tanks. Because they're all low tech, uh, this covers you for everything as well as the waste from the fish. Don't need any more than this. So it's all I've been using for years and it's, you know, everything looks great, doesn't it? So the reason I'm adding this in now is because all these plants are new and they haven't got root systems into that soil yet. So the least we can do is dose the water column so that all the leaves can pull in some nutrients. Again, always shake it up. Now for this size aquarium, all I need is like one capful. put the flow back on, fill the tank up a little bit more, and that should get it all moving around. And that's enough, to be honest. So you can see there, I've left a decent gap. Uh, my bet fish doesn't actually jump, it never has. So that's I'm fine with that. So I don't ever fill my tanks right to the top and it stops fish jumping. I very, very rarely get any fish jumping. And you can see that I got them all about that level. And it's the same story over this side as well, water level. A little bit less on that one, that's just because of evaporation because it's right underneath the air conditioner, so there's warm air going into this tank. But uh, 
Yeah, fish happy, yay. So we are of course looking very, very good. The plants are purling like crazy from that fresh water that's gone in. Obviously they've all been exposed to the atmosphere very quickly, plus the oxygenation of the water. Is that a word? I don't know if I made that up, but yeah, bubbles everywhere. We're forgetting one thing though, aren't we in a red tank? We need red root floaters all in this top section for sure. So some red roots there. Oh, look at how good they look underneath the light. Look at that. Some more. I don't know how many I'm going to put in, but I'm just going to keep going. Can't hurt, can it? And of course, those red root floaters are from another tank, which means they'll also be covered in beneficial bacteria all amongst the root systems. How good does that look right there? Oh, wow. <laughs> Our fish are going to look so good. We can now put him in. Come on, little guy. Your new home awaits. Yes, yes, yes. I know you're interested. There we go. Gotcha. Oh my goodness, he looks so good in there, doesn't he? Now some of you might be thinking, there's no heater in that tank, the better needs like tropical temperatures. Don't worry, I heat the rooms. Both my studios are heated to tropical temperatures. It's way more efficient, like when you've got as many tanks as me everywhere <laughs> to uh, heat the room rather than individual sort of heaters. So yeah, it, all the temperatures are matching, that's why I was able to just switch them across and put them straight in. He seems to be enjoying exploring it so far. So cool looking, isn't it? I'm, I went for the white because it stands out so nicely in this kind of scape, I think. Oh, really pleased with the result. So although this tank looks done, it will still grow and develop even more than it is now. The Monte Carlo will stop sort of growing upwards at some point and start carpeting all over that sand. Definitely it will because it's doing it in all my other tanks that have got no filter and are dirted. I'm really looking forward as well to seeing how well these crypts develop. They look gorgeous now and I'm hoping they stay that way as we move forward in time. But the boost, the boost already looks good. If it just continues growing like this, oh, hello fella. Um, if it keeps growing like this, then I'm gonna be super happy. So the bear seems to be settling in straight away. Look at him just, it's so good to watch, isn't it? There's something really exciting about when you first put a fish in and then seeing it explore the whole area is just so good. Now, could I put anything else in this tank with the better? Well, the size is surely big enough and it's gonna depend on what better you've got if you wanna do that. Tell you what, it might be quite nice to actually feed him now. So I'm using the Aquarian uh, Complete Nutrition Tropical and Temperate Flake Food. This stuff's brilliant. It's all I ever feed most of my fish unless they need a specialist food. Um, but he knows obviously, look, he's already here. Come on in, tap, tap, tap. He knows the tapping sound means it's food time, but he's exploring at the moment, so he might not come up. You're gonna come up? I'm freaking him out a bit. I'm just gonna leave some of this in the top here and hopefully he'll come and find it. So eventually he did notice that there was some food there. It must be very distracting being in this brand new environment, but as you can see, yum, 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 yum. Right, so that's another successful tank complete, but it does mean one thing. I've now got a free tank to start again on. What should I put in this tank? What fish should it be? Or what type of scape should it be? What do you guys want? Let me know and we'll do it. <laughs> 